All right, guys, I apologize. My phone died, and I record all my uh, videos on my phone. And not only did it die, I ran out of memory. So I had to delete a bunch of footage. So um, I finished the install, the carbon fiber uh, friend tubo brake lines. So this is the rear side. I think I'm going to remove this uh, yellow uh, friend tubo lobo. Lobo logo. I think this is just more of an indicator, not much of the design, because it says a uh, post rear, and I really don't like the color of it. So I'm gonna remove those. But I like these fittings; they're pretty cool. Gives you the, uh, the logo, and the install went nice. It uh, mapped out exactly like the stock hardware are the uh, the lines so right now I've got the uh, banjos on the calipers just kind of hand tight I still plan on pulling the calipers off and redoing the seals so I have a seal kit from Brimbo coming and uh, right now I'm gonna make a video showing you guys basically uh, how to clean these up take them apart pull the seals out and I'll uh, basically prep them for uh, when I install the new seals. So show you how to pull the pistons out and uh, get those internal seals taken out. I'll clean this caliper up and get it ready for uh, the install of the new seals. And then we'll get this installed back on the bike. I've got a stall bus uh, bleeder valve. We'll install that. So uh, stay tuned. All right, guys. I'm set up on the bench now. And like I said... Um, this video, I'm going to show you guys how to pull apart this caliper. Uh, we're going to be taking the brake pads out. So I'm going to show you guys how to remove the brake pads, um, uh, as well as the pistons on the inside. So I bought a rebuild kit for this caliper and I bought a rebuild kit for the front two calipers. So we'll get started on this, uh, rear caliper first. Uh, we'll start with removing the brake pads and then we'll pull out the piston. So stay tuned. All right, we're going to start with the back. There's a clip on the back side of this pin that holds the brake pads in. So we got to remove the brake pads first. And by doing that, we need to uh, pull this pin off. So all you need is a flathead screwdriver and just with a little bit of downward pressure. You can remove that clip. And then we need to drive this pin forward and pull that out so we can uh, pull the brake pads out because the brake, brake pads are actually, um, well, actually you can see they're locked in with that pin. All right, so basically how I drive this pin out I turn it face down because we're going to be going in that direction, driving this pin forward through the front of the caliper. So once again, face down, then I just get basically a flat object, which is in my case, a four millimeter Allen socket. So I'm going to set that on top of the pin, get a rubber mallet and just give it a few taps. Okay. That pin, there's some tension on this because the uh, the spring that holds this basically pulls tension upwards and that's what you're kind of fighting. So basically I get my screwdriver and just kind of drive it out the rest of the way really slow. Just enough so I can get the spring off. Got the spring off. Now you got no tension. Should slide on out. And if you can see at the front, it's got this little slip collar that wedges in that front cavity there. So this goes in and then that wedges in the front side. So pin out. Brake pads slide straight out the bottom. You guys can see that. They just come right out. So now 
what we need to do is pull these pistons out. Well, stay tuned. Things first, we need to drive these pistons out. And what I like to do is basically uh, insert my air nozzle into this cavity and then just shoot air and that'll expand and push these pistons outwards. But it is a little bit of a mess, so I'll get some uh, towels set up. With a uh, air nozzle, the tapered air nozzle, that helps get a nice seal so you don't have a bunch of blowback. But uh, I basically drive that nozzle into that opening where your banjo and uh, your banjo bolt goes and then just push air and then that'll drive your calipers or your, uh, your uh, pistons out of the cavity that they sit in. So here we go. All right, I feel one pushed all the way out. All right, like I said, we got trap fluid in there, so have the towels at the ready. So typically what happens, you get one out and then you got this one trapped in and then you have no resistance anymore because you have a open cavity over here. So let's see if we can uh, manage to push this other one out. All right, guys, to drive the other piston out, what I typically do, since you have that open cavity on the other side, it's a little tricky, but there's two ports that the fluid travels from one side to the other side. So if you stick a rubber glove, you can see those ports in there. If you stick a rubber glove, kind of balled up, and then apply pressure to those open openings, it'll build up enough resistance to where you can actually use the air and press those out. So there we go. We've got both pistons out without using any type of pliers or anything because you don't want to mar these pistons up because then you, will, you won't have a good seal. So there you have it. So I'm going to basically get these all cleaned up. Like I said, I bought a rebuild kit, so it comes with a new pin, a new sleeve, a new clip on the back, and a new spring retainer. All right, guys, now we gotta get these seals out. So you got two seals on this side and two seals on this side. You got the fatter seal at the bottom and the skinnier, narrow seal towards the uh, top. So, be very careful with the pick tool. You don't want to reach in there and start picking and prying and pushing or pressing with a lot of force because, you know, if you slip and you scratch or mar up the inside walls, you're not going to have a good seal. You're going to have leaks and you're going to be, you're going to need to buy a new caliper. So uh, definitely take your time. Uh, not a whole lot of, of force is needed. If you can get a real narrow pick, and basically push the seal over to one side and kind of drop your pick tool behind it and then it pulls right out the bigger one the bigger seal the wider seal is a little easier because there's a little bit more room in that channel but the same thing you want to basically get your pick and you can get a close-up i can see that let's see I don't know if it'll zoom in. Basically, guys, just get in there. And you want to get your pick tool. I try and get 
dead center of the seal and then push the seal out of the way and let the pick tool drop behind it. Like I said, take your time. You don't want to put a lot of force. You don't want to leverage off the uh, side walls. So if you saw that, basically I got on top of the seal wall and just kind of flicked it out without even using any of the side wall of the metal. So we'll start and see if I can show you that again. So I start by pressing the center of the seal and then just kind of flick it outwards. See that? Maybe not. Maybe you did. I'll pull it out. All right. So we're out, guys. Yeah, you definitely uh, want to make sure you take your time and you don't scratch up the walls. And then get to the cleaning side the kit that I purchased uh, is just a piston kit it comes with new pistons uh, new o-rings and the pin and the spring and the clip I don't believe it comes with the smaller o-rings for the inside wall so I'm not gonna separate these and uh, just gonna do a nice clean all the way around like I said I got a new bleeder valve so we'll install that and we'll get this caliper um, Shined up and back on the bike. Hold tight. All right, guys, we're all cleaned up. Got the new kit out. Got the new spring. New pin. And here's the caliper, guys. All I used to clean this caliper was some simple green and a nylon bristled brush. So... Just a little bit of simple green soaking in on that grease. Not really grease, but the uh, grime from the road and some of that uh, brake dust that gets caked up inside there. So all in all, not too bad. So we'll get these uh, seals pressed in. I'll show you guys how that's done. And then We'll get the new uh, style bus uh, bleeder valve installed and we'll be ready to put this bad boy back on the bike. Hold tight. All right, guys, we got the style bus bleeder valves. And I'm going to get one of these installed on the rear caliper and the other two on the front. Hold tight. All right, guys, we got the stall bus bleeder valve installed. So we'll see how that works out when it comes time to bleeding the brakes. Should be a lot better than your average bleeder valve because you don't have to back the main uh, valve out or bolt out. There's a secondary one. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be pulling off the front calipers on this Ducati V4. Uh, these brake lines were just installed last night. These are the Friend Tubo carbon fiber uh, brake lines. So there's no fluid in the system. There may be some fluid trapped in the uh, caliper just behind the pistons. Uh, but right now, these uh, this banjo bolt is just kind of hand tight. I just routed everything and installed last night, but I still uh, plan on pulling the calipers off today. We're going to basically remove the pads, so I'll show you guys how to remove the brake pads and then also how to pull out the pistons and the seals because I'm going to be replacing those with some uh, brand new Brembo uh, seal kit. Um, so hold tight. We'll get these pulled off. What you're going to need is a 8 millimeter uh, uh, Allen to break these off, um, these bolts will come out. Keep in mind you have spacers that um, go behind your caliper before they touch your forks. 
So let's start by pulling these bolts off. They're in there nice and tight, but once you break the bond, it backs out easy. So I'll do the rest by hand. So keep in mind when you guys, when you pull these calipers off, you're cautious of your rim. You want to make sure that you don't just pull this last bolt off without holding your caliper from falling. And for me, I'm going to go right there so I can remove the brake lines first. I don't want to fight that afterwards. I'm trying to give you guys a good, good angle at the same time. So let's see. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of hang those out of the way. Finish backing this last bolt off, supporting the bottom. Let this other spacer drop out. And basically pull it out around your rotor. I see a little bit of fluid in there, so I'll be careful with that. And there you have it guys. So caliper down, took off the bike. Let's take this to the bench and then I'll get you guys set up over there and I'll show you guys how to pull the pads out and then we'll go about removing the uh, pistons and the seals. Hold tight. All right guys, so we got you set up over here on the bench. Uh, we got the caliper here, taking off the bike. And first things first, uh, get yourself some paper towels, some rags, because there will be fluid trapped behind your piston. So when we go through the process of uh, pushing those out, it gets a little messy. So try and extract as much of the fluid out as you can. I like to leave the uh, bleeder valve in. I'll show you why in a little bit, but let's first start off by uh, removing these, um, these pads. So what I like to do um, is basically you have to separate uh, these pads away from each other just enough to where you have enough clearance to push these pads into this inner channel, this center channel, and that will allow them to uh, slide out. So first things first, um, be mindful of your brake pad material. If you plan on reusing your pads, um, you don't want to damage the brake pad material um, so what I like to do, just uh, good practice is always kind of use something that's going to be uh, safe in a sense to um, press in and start prying around. Uh, this plastic pry tool that I have, I go in and then I just kind of give it a little push. And as you can see, you're going to drive some of that fluid out. And that's where this rag comes in handy. So you're just pushing it back. enough to create that space which I believe we have I don't want to push them back too far because then I'm going to fight that later when we try to push these pistons out so all you need is just a little bit of uh, room for these pads to drop out and into that inner channel there which I don't think we got enough so let's go back and give it a little bit more of a push okay that should do it okay one pad out looks like the uh, stock pads so these probably are the original pads spikes got about 5,000 miles and these are probably the same pads put on from the factory so there you have it guys pads are out this little spring clip comes out since there's no tension on uh, the spring from the pad. So just push down on the backside and then kind of pull forward. That removes the clip. And then once again, try and get as much of that fluid out before you start the next step. And that next step, what I like to do 
is get a little bit of compressed air. I like to use this nozzle that's tapered because it kind of creates a seal as I push into this uh, banjo cavity and drive air behind the pistons and that'll push the pistons out from where they're, uh, where they're sitting. So uh, to not damage the inside wall and to actually help create a seal and blow back from the uh, brake fluid because it's gonna atomize as you push air through it. Uh, I drive my nozzle into this opening with a uh, rag, as you can see. And then what I try and capture this, so I'll give it short burst and that'll help push. You can see these pistons. So you gotta be careful you don't just push them all the way out because what will happen is you will lose that uh, ability to use this compressed air because it'll just leak out of whatever piston comes out first. So what I like to do is I kind of put my fingers in there, press until I start feeling the uh, pistons pushing on my fingers. And then I push with my fingers, the, the piston itself back into the, into the cavity. And then from there, there's some play. You can wiggle them around and if you're lucky enough, you can slide them out, but sometimes you got to push out one side all the way and then you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So this side looks like I can actually wiggle out. Sometimes I debate on doing that because this one is down really far and that's going to be hard for me to wiggle around and pull out. I can probably wiggle this front one out and this one out, but I'm going to try to drive this lower one out and let's see if I can capture that with you guys but sometimes I use my pry tool to help and let's see if I can show you guys just kind of what there it is all right I don't know if you guys saw that but this back one pressed up now it's wiggling up that one's wiggling up. That one's wiggling up or down. I think we got it, guys. So I'll pull these out. You got to just push it back just enough. You don't want to push it back and, and fight pulling it back down. So just be kind of mindful of that. Just enough, guys. That's all you want to push them back in to give yourself clearance to pull the one side out. Okay, let's see. Okay, that one. Sometimes it helps when you pull them, just run the oil that's on your fingers around. So when you push them back in, they're nice and lubed up and they're easy to work when you're maneuvering them around. So let's push this guy just a little bit. Okay, out. And out. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. That was probably one of the easiest ones I've done so far. A lot of times you're going to find yourself uh, one side popping all the way out, and then you're stuck because the other side is not out far enough to where you can kind of manipulate these around and pull them out. So you're going to have to basically trap the, the inlet to the one side that's out to block the air so you can use the air again to drive the other side further out of its, uh, if it, out of its pocket. So um, I'll give you a little clip of what happened on my last, the left side. So this is the right side, left side already completed. I've got that sitting over here, but I'll put a little clip in to show you kind of what I'm talking about. This is best case scenario. So it doesn't always happen that way. There's a lot of fighting back and forth. And like I said, I'll, I'll show you that um, in a little, clip if I can figure out how to do that.
I don't think I drove these out far enough to where I can wiggle them back and forth and get them to come the rest of the way. That would have been too easy. And now that this side's opened up, you don't have any uh, anywhere to trap the air to force these to come forward. So air will just blow out of these uh, channels here, these cavities. So I'm going to try to wiggle these back and forth a little bit to see if I can pull them out. That's not happening. The uh, next step, I get a rubber glove, I ball it up, and I stuff it into this first chamber. That's where the uh, passageway is. Then there's a passageway in between the two chambers. So really all we gotta do is block this passage. That'll trap the air. And then there's pressure now building up behind these two uh, pistons. So let me grab a rubber glove. So if you can see inside there, that's your passageway where the brake fluid comes in behind the piston and it pushes the piston and then you got the passageways in between you're not needing to worry about those just the one that comes into this first chamber so like i said i get a rubber glove helps create a seal and i just basically ball it up and i push it into that first chamber and then i want to push force into that opening of that chamber and then we'll start with the uh, compressed air again all right so uh, next step what I like to do is just kind of get everything get all the fluid out and then get nice and set up with the pick tool and be very careful as you're picking around the last thing you want to do is mar up the inside walls of where these seals uh, sit inside. So what I like to do, let's see if I can show you, I get my pick tool, I press in the center of the seal, press down just a little bit, and I rotate the seal just to break the seal if it's stuck into the, into the channel that it's sitting in. That way it helps when you go to pick it out. It's not stuck in one spot and you're fighting it and it'll cause problems if you uh, are kind of driving that pick tool around. You don't want to mar up the, uh, the openings or the sidewalls because then you're not going to have a, a good seal uh, come time to push these pistons in. You're going to have a leak. Can't fix it. You're going to have to buy a new caliper. So... This is the part you want to take extra care. Um, so right now, what I like to do on this first seal, once again, I kind of get to this back edge, just a little bit off center, but still on top of the rubber. I press down my pick tool and then kind of just flick outwards. So let's see if I can show you guys. I don't want to use, there it goes. I don't want to use the wall of where the seal sits as leverage. I just want to use kind of this outer wall uh, as my leverage point. So if you can see that I use that and then I get on top of the rubber seal with the pick and then I kind of pick and pry out because these inner walls are the important ones. This outer wall, uh, not so important, um, but nonetheless, try not to use any uh, leverage point to prevent deforming how it's set up. So this back, this back uh, seal, if you can see it, there's a little bit more of a channel that they sit in. So you actually have room to get your pick tool kind of on the back side, And then from there, I just drive the pick tool into the rubber and pull out. Just kind of flick outwards once again. There you have it. So repeat that on the next three. So it shouldn't take too long. Um, as you press down into the rubber, 
it kind of lifts the uh, seal. And then when it lifts, you use that as your edge to kind of pick it out. Okay, I'm on to the other side. See if I can do this kind of real time without talking. All right, there you have it, guys. Seals are picked out. Now it's time to clean up these calipers. So I just get some uh, simple green, kind of douse the, uh, the body of the caliper, and I get myself a nice little nylon brush and just clean up inside and out. What I like to do is I take this, uh, these nylon brushes and I'll have a, uh, uh, one of them that I basically thin the, uh, the, the, the side width, take this to my grinder and kind of just grind down the plastic. There you go. Sorry. Grind down the plastic just to get the, uh, the head of this narrow enough to where I can actually get inside this inner wall and, you know, basically brush and clean down inside there because it just doesn't reach when you uh, try and get there. So that little spot there, or you can get, you know, kind of a scotch pad and, you know, uh, clean the inside just to break the, uh, the grime out of there. But um, nylon brush, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a softer way of going and cleaning and breaking up some of the the caked on grime you don't want to go in there with a the wire brush and start gouging and scratching up the finish and you know making uh, the inside of these uh, walls uh, marred up and scratched so it won't hold a seal all right let's go outside and uh get these cleaned up Hey right, guys, there you have it. Calipers are all cleaned up. Inside and out like new. Now we're ready to uh, install the uh, seal kit. So we'll step you guys through how to insert those. Pretty straightforward. They uh, just pop right in. There are two different sizes. The, uh, the thicker one is at the bottom. If you can see there's two inner walls. So the thicker seal goes at the bottom, the thinner seal at the top. I uh, really can't get those wrong. And then you just press in the uh, the piston. So stay tuned. Um, I'll get you guys set up. All right, guys. So here's all the uh, Brembo hardware for rebuilding the uh, calipers. This is everything you're going to need for the uh, front and rear set. I'll link the um, hardware uh, numbers down in the uh, descriptions below all right so let me get you guys set up on the tripod and we'll start this uh install of the um, rebuild kits all right so i got the old seals set aside uh the old hardware uh set aside and we'll start opening the first kit which comes with your seals 
and this kit's for one caliper, so you will need to buy two kits to complete your install. They come with an oil kind of greased up O-rings. Also comes with the uh, fluid, the assembly fluid. So we'll make sure we uh, lube the seals up before we install them. Then we'll also put a nice little uh, film around the outside of these pistons. That way when we drive them back in, they're not going in dry. So that'll mess up your uh, seals. It'll cause them to kind of turn on themselves and you won't get a good, uh, good seal. All right, so first things first, let's get the seals in and then let's get the pistons pressed in and we'll go about that uh, one side at a time. All right, guys, I got you set up. I got the uh, O-rings spread out and we're gonna install one at a time. I've got the, what they call assembly fluid opened up. I'm gonna leave that on top of that package. So you wanna pre-lube these seals before you install them. You never wanna install them dry and then try to push in that piston. One, it's gonna be hard to try to drive that piston against this dry rubber, but it also could uh, turn, it could twist on you as it sits inside that that piston wall. So uh, we'll start with the, um, the lower Basically what I do is I kind of do a little pinch on the O-ring and then if I can just do that, show you at the same time, kind of pinch and then push and drop in and let it flex outward. So see if I can capture this on film. So kind of stick your finger from the inside hold and there you have it it's not hard to do basically kind of flex in on one way bring your finger around kind of hook it hold it and then as you kind of maneuver it around it'll drop into play into place this assembly lube is some messy stuff but you want to get it all around. And I didn't mention, but there's two different sizes of seals. The, the wider, thicker seal is at the bottom. You really can only put it in one way, so don't be worried about putting in the wrong spot, so. All right, round two. Gonna drop it in, get your finger in there. I'm trying to give you guys a good angle, so I'm kind of fighting the install process a little bit, but I still think I'm giving you a horrible shot. I'm gonna try something different. Okay, we're in. Okay, one side down. This is some messy stuff. You wanna make sure you don't twist the O-ring. of the seal because there's a flat, if you can see, there's a flat back side 
and then the inside of the seal you can see it look right here it's kind of like a double walled it's a different it's a different inside edge versus the back edge which is flat which is resting against that uh, seal wall or the piston wall <clears throat> All right, now you want to just give it a little once over, make sure your seals are the correct way all the way around you don't have any twisted or seals sitting in the wrong spot they're all deep inside the walls of that piston area all right, next we're gonna push these pistons in. So we'll move those to this little sticky work surface or slimy work surface. And basically, I'm just gonna pour some of this out. And then I'll just kinda grease up the outer wall. <clears throat> and then, You want to position this piston right over and upright as best you can. You don't want to drive it in sideways and then wedge it to where you can't push it down and it's going to be a hard, a hard time to pull it up. So get it sitting right over that uh, opening and then just press it down just like that. Having this all right guys so just got done wiping the caliper down I had the uh, assembly fluid kind of all over the place so you want to make sure you get all that dried up uh, you don't want to leave that because it is be a magnet for the uh, brake dust and any kind of road grime that kicks up and it'll just uh, be stuck and then definitely it'll start building up around the piston so as they drive up and in or in and out it'll pull any of that debris back inside so you want this as dry as you can uh, get it basically after the install so if you get a little of that fluid anywhere clean it up all right hold tight we'll get set up for the next one all right guys round two so Got the next kit out, opened up. I'm gonna use this same bag. All right, so like I said, uh, you wanna wipe down any of that excess fluid uh, prior to installing your pistons. So I installed the pistons on the last caliper first and I had a hard time uh, reaching in and wiping this flat surface area. You want the lube on the inside where the pistons travel, not on the outside. All right, next we'll, uh, we'll lube up the pistons and we'll press them into place hold tight all right guys so now we're ready to install the brakes 
We've got our new uh, retainer spring. So this is a little bit different from what I pulled out. I confirmed with uh, the parts person at Ducati and this is the right model number or part number, but it looks like they made a modification and there's no, I guess like hanger hooks that would clip on the backside and hang right here in this indent. So like I said, this was confirmed the new version and I'm gonna show you how to install this. There's really only one way this goes. This pushes over the uh, front side. Just like that. These little spoons kind of rise up. There's a directional arrow if you can see it. So the caliper actually sits on the bike just like this. Arrows pointing forward. And these little back springs are hanging down, basically keeping tension on your brake pads. So next you want to grab your pad and you want to slide your pad with the back side into the cavity. So there's a little cavity right here where this brake tab will go into just like so. And then you're gonna press, while you keep back pressure on, press up and down and you'll feel it clip into place and then kind of just evenly press that against the uh, pistons and see how they don't move around that spring is keeping it in position so same thing you want to install this into that back groove first keep pressure on that back side right here and then press up and it'll drop right into place and there you have it so we are installed clip is in i've uh tightened in our bleeder valve and i will put this back on the bike loosely and install the banjo bolt and now on to the next caliper so like i said on to the next caliper guys um Basically what I just did, you repeat. It's the same exact process. You put your clip in first, slide your pads in, press those against the pistons, and then you just reinstall this back onto the bike and you're good to go. Make sure you do not forget your spacers that we pulled off, that you pulled off. So the spacers on the bottom side, your bolt goes in and then you're good to go. Put your banjo bolt back on and there you have it just like new. Thanks guys for joining. Have a great night. Catch you on the next one.